Comments made on the following paid commercial program are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. On the program this week, tax tips with David Ingram, money marshals, and our special guest, Garth Turner. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox and delighted to welcome back to the program this week our very first guest. Uh, he was with us on program number one and he's back with us here at the end of May. Garth Turner is with us. Welcome back, Garth. Good to Thank see you. Thank you, Sterling. Lovely to be on the show again and thanks for the uh the invitation, because I understand you guys are getting lots of legs with the show. Many more viewers. Yes. Congratulations. That's seems wonderful. To be, seems to be working quite well. Excellent. And, uh, we're grateful for that. Garth, of course, is the author of Money Road, which is his latest of several books. This is Tools for the Wild Ride Ahead. And since you and I last talked on television, Garth, the ride has become even wilder. Oh, absolutely. You know, Sterling, we're in, I think, this era of sort of uh, financial earthquake, the tectonic plates are shifting you know and we've got so many issues happening at the same time right now markets are really very volatile i think it's going to take quite a number of weeks if not months for us to actually know the direction are we into a second dip maybe equaling the one that we saw in the winter of 09 is it going to be that bad or are we going to just kind of go down 15 20 percent bop off and go to a new height we don't quite know yet but I'm thinking that we're actually getting into that second dip territory and I'm thinking that you know if nothing changes dramatically in the next month or so we could well see a 30 plus percent decline in the markets and that's going to be pretty bad news for Canada. You know, I was bullish on Canada up to a couple of weeks ago. Right. But now with the European situation, commodity prices is falling things really have changed quite a bit. And I think investors need to watch shows like this, really do their research because we're into, as I say, very changeable times. Well, and to follow up on that, Garth blogs daily at greaterfool.ca. And on one of your blogs a, a while back now, uh, you indicated uh, some changing circumstances in your worldview. You said, and this is a quote, the risk needle has moved. Yeah. And you point to the BP uh, tragedy uh, off the uh, southern Gulf Coast yeah. and the European debt as two indicators as to why that worldview has changed. Well, Give us some details. They, I, I picked those two because at the time I wrote that, they were very much indicators, um, symbols of the kind of change that we're seeing right now. Um, I think the, the fact that we had this dramatic oil spill and the consequences of it are far reaching. What's it going to mean for Obama and his energy policy? What's it going to mean for oil security for the United States? What is that going to mean for Alberta and Suncor and the tar sands? What is it going to mean for our whole ecological climate change agenda? So that's an example of an incident that I think has the power to precipitate many more things down the road, like Greece and Greece's problems really are German banks problems and German bank problems are economic union problems and then you've got regime change in Britain right now you've got a whole bunch of weak countries and because we have weakness in Europe we now have weakness in commodities that's taken gold down and oil down it's taken Canada down it's taken currencies down so these are the dominoes right now that lead me to believe that this risk meter this needle has moved a fair amount in the last little while and I think it's time for investors to be really what I call aggressively cautious. Okay and uh, I'd like to go back to Greece for a second. We did a show recently with Professor Andre Gerilamatis from the Hellenic Studies Department at Simon Fraser University and learned a lot more than most of us ever knew about Greece and how they've come to be where they are today. Uh, there are people, Garth, who say, you know, if they're in that kind of serious trouble mm -hmm. and they're that close to default, why not let them default? Yeah, yeah, that's actually an opinion that has gained more credence in the last little while because the European leaders got together and said, hey, guess what? We solved the problem. We have a trillion dollar bailout. 
well, that was impressive for like two days. Mm -hmm. And after that, it was like, okay, that's giving morphine to a dying patient. It is not curing the disease. So the disease is still there. And increasingly, I am hearing respected people saying exactly the same thing. But if you can say it about Greece, why can't you say it about the over-indebted American government? Or how about the Canadian family who's never had as much debt as it's had before? So once you let the debt dominoes start to fall, it becomes pretty tough to stop them. And I think that's what central banks are worried about. Well, and also you have a situation with Greece and we saw it with the bailouts here in Canada and in the United States with General Motors and beyond, uh, where you have governments going into greater levels of debt to try to stimulate mm -hmm. the economy. Yeah. And I know that's not been a, a method that you approve of. And now we're sort of, the chickens have come home to roost, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and they've, they've only started. And the one thing that I think viewers need to remember is simply this, debt equals taxes. That's what they're discovering in Greece. That's why they're in the streets, right? Spending cuts and more taxes. Well, inevitably it's coming here. The HST is but a taste of what people should expect. And there's a lot more around the bend. Well, we'll come back to the HST and more on taxes in a little bit, but I want to stay in Europe for a few minutes here because the debt domino effect, as you've described it, has really knocked the markets for a loop. You, yeah. You're right. They had, there was a first couple of euphoric days after that initial bailout was announced by Merkel and the European Union. And since then, the markets have taken quite a, quite a whack. Yeah, yeah, they have. And that's because of the realization that that was only a bailout. It wasn't a solution. And because it's a bailout, now the markets have just absorbed it. It's just kind of part of the wallpaper. So what next? And then, of course, Germany made a really stupid move of banning short selling. And that all of a sudden said to investors, you may be worried about European bonds and European currencies, but we're going to take away a big tool that you had to protect your downside. And that blindsided the markets. I think that was one of the precipitating moments that's gotten us into this roiling that we're in now. Well, wasn't it, though, American banks doing that same kind of short selling, essentially betting against the economy that precipitated this crisis that happened a couple of years ago. And why shouldn't Germany move in the same direction? Well, partly that was part of the cause, but not the root cause. That was just sort of the icing on the, the credit crisis cake in the United States. I think any time the market is blindsided, and especially on the negative, they're going to react very, very aggressively, and that's what we've seen now. Um, markets don't like to be shocked. No investor wants to wake up one morning and find that the rules were changed, whether it's Germany banning short selling or Mr. Harper taxing income trusts. Nobody wants to wake up and find that sort of thing, sure. and they tend to beat the hell out of you when it happens. Pleasure to have Garth Turner with us back on this week's edition of the Money and Wealth Show. Lots more to come, too. Stay with us. My name is David Wolfen. I'm the president of Avino Silver and Gold Mines. Avino owns 100% of the historic Avino mine in Durango, Mexico. Mining dates back over 500 years and under our control, we mined it for 27 years. We're starting on a new era of mining and we plan to reopen the mine this year. Avino trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol ASM. For more information, call 604-682-3701 or visit the company's website, www.avino.com.